continue in English? Yeah, yeah. We'll continue in English, don't worry. <laughs> now, please, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me say thank you to uh, Evo and your group for inviting me here. I wish I had money in your bank, but unfortunately, I don't. I have a, another treasure that I carry in my head that I would like to share with you. And what makes me even more happy is that I see a lot of children around here. Because now, I have dedicated my life, or whatever is left of it, to the children of the future. Because I have spent 35 years of my life working in an industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and they do nothing but annihilate the population of this world. And why do they do that? Because they want to make money, 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 money. They don't care about your lives. They only care about their wallets. Now, whatever I tell you here today is not something that I dreamed about or observed somewhere. It's something that I have done myself. I have been just as criminal as they are. My hands are just as dirty as these people. Now, all of you sitting here, Answer me a question. When you go to the doctor, he looks at you, stethoscope, laboratory tests, machine tests, this word. Those tests, by the way, is to make money. Then he tells you you're sick. Here's a prescription. Go to the pharmacy and take this medicine one tablet three times a day. What do you do? Tell me. They don't throw it away. All of you here, you go to the pharmacy and you get your medicine and you take it, like the good citizen. But when you go to the car company to buy a car, you ask the salesman questions. If you don't get what you want, you don't buy the car. So why don't you ask the doctor what is it he's giving you? The reason I'm telling you this is because only you have the power to stop these criminals with what they're doing in the pharma industry. Because you are not sick people. Ten you season. are consumers. You are consumers. And the pharma industry makes money because they tell everybody that you are sick. Now, you can ask me the question, why have you been doing this then? There are several reasons, and I'm not making any excuses. I was a bad boy. I was colored. I was young. I'm still colored. I got scared last night when the good doctor over here told me I look a little pale. I said, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but she fixed it. It's okay. Well, at least up till now, it's coming. Anyway, the reason was that I was young, I was a colored man in the white world. I had to survive. The pharma industry gave me a good job, and I felt that I was in medicine because that's what I studied. So I started as a salesman. What was it? Uh, as a salesman. So <laughs> I, I had a good salary. I had the car, the expense account, and as I moved up in my career, where I eventually became a director for a company uh, in Sweden, if the, the affiliate company of one of the largest and most evil pharma corporations in the world, Eli Lilly and Company. You may have heard of them. They're evil. And I, I can say that because I was part of the evil. So in those days, the money, I've been around the world, 
You ask me all the top hotels in the world. You ask me about all the big airports in the world, gourmet restaurants. I had a golden key to the wine cellar of the opera cellar in Stockholm, Sweden. The uh, opera cellar is where the Nobel people have dinner. I mean, you can go in that restaurant. The, well, the Princess Christina was sitting next to me at another table the other uh, one time. Uh, so all of this was offered to me on a plate. And tell I so, just like Eva give Adam the apple, I had an apple too. Anyway, to make a long story short, I had a career. I did a lot of bad things. Sure. They fired me. I started my own company. Worked for several other pharma companies, big ones, world players. Then I met a German woman 15 years ago. And uh, she said, I have to come to live in Germany because she's not going to move to Florida. And I said, okay. So I came to Germany. I retired, officially retired. I played golf. Have golf a good gespielt. golfer in Germany, and I relaxed myself. Then I had a heart attack. Then I had a second heart attack, and now I can't get no heart attack anymore. I have, I have a titanium battery right here, so I can drop here today, and my heart will still beat. <laughs> That's just a joke. Anyway, no, it's not a joke. I have a pacemaker, but I mean the whole. Anyway. Somebody, the power, I don't know, some people say God, some people say Jesus, some people say this. I call it the power. The almighty power blessed me and my wife with a child. I was 62 years old. This child is now four and a half. Now, when this child was born, he went to the pediatrician after the uh, uh, six months to a year they make a checkup. The doctor checked the boy and said, yeah, he's healthy, he's fine. Now I need to give him his Imph cocktail, Fermasen. Now I had told my wife, nobody, no doctor, no professor, no nobody gives my child any kind of medication unless they discuss it with me and I approve it. Now this doctor, well, apart from being lucky that I wasn't there, she threw my wife and child out of the clinic and said, we only treat vaccinated children. When my wife came home and told me that, I considered how lucky this woman was because if I were there, Believe me, I would have strangled her. How dare she refuse to have my child come to this clinic and she's practicing as a doctor. What happened to the Hippocrates, the oath of Hippocrates? When you become a doctor, you swear the oath. Primum non nocere. The patient comes first. That made me mad. So I researched this lady and I found that she was sitting in a committee or on a committee with a politician and members of the pharma company that made the inf, the vaccine. And they're propagating to the government in Germany to introduce mandatory vaccination. So I started to do some research on what's going on in Germany in the medical business. I've never worked there. I only lived there. I got my pension from Sweden, by the way. I didn't, uh, I don't get anything from the uh, German state or anybody. I found out also that general practitioners, just like this woman and other doctors, were prescribing psychotropic drugs to children. Shortly after that, I read in an article that was posted from uh, 
the European Medical Association that they were going to approve the drug Prozac to give to children. Uh, so it's Fluctin, Fluctin in, uh, in uh, Schweiz, uh, in, in it, to the children of the future. Because I have spent 35 years of my life working in an industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and they do nothing but annihilate you here today. It's not something that I dreamed about or observed somewhere. It's something that I have done myself. I have been just as criminal as they are. My hands are just as dirty as these people. Now. Can you continue in English? Yeah, yeah. We'll continue in English, don't worry. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me say thank you to uh, Evo and your group for inviting me here. I wish I had money in your bank, but unfortunately, I don't. I have a, another treasure that I carry in my head that I would like to share with you. And what makes me even more happy is that I see a lot of children around here. Now, I have dedicated my life, or whatever is left of it, the population of this world. And why do they do that? Because they want to make money, 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 money. They don't care about your lives. They only care about their wallets. Now, whatever I tell you,